What is up everybody, my name's Chance. Today we're gonna to be diving into an Orzov aggro deck. That's right, not mono black, not mono red, not Selesnya. This is Orzov, which is astounding to me because I've, I've never, never really played an Orzov aggro. We've had Orzov aristocrats with the cruel celebrants and all this, that, and the other, but I'm telling you now, this deck's max. And the author of this deck ended up taking it all the way to mythic number 50. We'll have a link for that somewhere down below. But without further ado, let's hop into what this spicy gravy train actually holds, right? So two mana, two mana, two copies of Alslet of Life's Bounty. Uh, one, it's a 1-1 one, one lifelinker, which you'll find later on is very, very important. And then furthermore, for one mana, you can protect your target creatures or enchantments with, uh, you know, any, any color protection, which is really, really nice. We do have four copies of Selfless Savior because unlike Alslet, you don't have to pay any mana and you can sacrifice this and give your other creatures indestructible, which in a lot of scenarios isn't as good as uh, protection, especially nowadays that we have so much exile effects in the meta. Um, it's it's still very, very nice to give your creatures indestructible. It allows you to swing in and it's it's only one mana, right? So you're not, you're not even giving up that much. Three copies of Blood Chief's Thirst. This gives you some awesome removal as well as the ability to remove stuff super early, right? One mana removal is insane. One mana efficient removal is insane, right? Next up, moving on to our two drops, we have four copies of Luminarch Aspirant. This little two mana one one human cleric may not be the strongest card in the deck, but it is certainly the most snowball-y. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Now obviously you can select almost any creature in the world for this and it's gonna get bigger, better, and badder. Not to mention the fact you have the Auslet and the Selfless Saviors to help protect the creatures that you're buffing up. And Auslet has lifelink, like I said earlier, so if you're needing that extra life, now you can gain it, right? Seasoned Hollow Blade is actually kind of the bread and butter of this deck. This and the Skyclave Shade, they're like they're like the yin and yang of this deck, if you will. So, two mana for this 3-1. You can discard a card, tap this card, and it gains indestructible, which I know sounds a little expensive, but whenever you're playing things like Skyclave Shade, where you discard it and you can replay it from your battlefield almost every single turn, it's really not that expensive to be discarding things to keep this alive to make the trade out and then to finish your opponent off just with efficient attacks right and that's essentially what this deck is all about it's just getting in that damage efficiently controlling the board and you know it's not as it's not as fast as some of the other aggro decks but I, i'm telling you now it works so efficiently and it it, it controls the game it's a it's an aggro deck that can control the game. And that's such a weird feeling for, for me, at least personally. Sajiri's Shelter slash Glacier. This is a beautiful land, not to mention the fact it acts as a backup protection. You know, sometimes you're not gonna hit your Alice Lids and they're, they're gonna have killed your Selfless or whatever. And you're gonna need just a little bit more. And that's where the Shelter comes in. Two mana, instant speed, target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice. So really good in that manner. And if you don't need it for, for that, well, it's a land. It helps you curve out, helps make sure you're, you're building, right? And then last but not least in the two drop slot, we have Sky Cleave Shade. Two mana for the truth, blah, 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 for a three one that can't block, which normally would seem like eh, but it can attack, it can get kicked out and have two additional counters. You can kick it from your graveyard, which is beautiful. And it has the landfall ability of whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if Skyclave Shade is in your graveyard and it's your turn, you may cast it from your graveyard this turn. So you don't get to return it to your hand and then rediscard it, but it does allow you to continuously replay them. It doesn't enter tapped, which is nice. Um, although it can't block, so I guess it might as well enter tapped, right? Any hoosers, moving us on to our three drop slot, we have Archon of Emeria, and since we're playing this in best of one, I found it to be, I won't say necessary in the main board, and especially since the Euro ban, or whatever sort of bans that happened Monday have probably already rolled out by now, so this card may not be as needed depending on where the meta is sitting, but given we were in a very Omnath meta at the time of me playing this deck, this is really a big key, right? Three mana for this two, three flying. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Hello, you're gonna cast down your Oro, Oro or Omnath or Lotus Cobra and then not have the ability to cast anything else after that. Now, obviously things like the Genesis Ultimatum still really, really hurts. Your goal is to generally try to take them out before that point, right? 
Moving us down, Mall of the Skyclaves. Three mana for this uh, artifact equipment. It is in the mono white category as well, and it reads, Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, has flying and first strike, not to mention the fact that it automatically equips itself when it comes down. So this is really beautiful, and it reminds me a lot of the uh, Demonic Embrace card, right? Three mana, three plus three, plus one, and has flying. You don't get the first strike, and you get a little bit more damage, but first strike in a lot of cases is actually better. You know, if your opponent has death touch, or if they're of equal value, First strike wins, right? So it's a really nice card, and this is a beautiful way to give these Skyclave shades so much value because you throw, you know, the plus two, plus two, or the plus three, plus one, and now you have this big old five three or six two in the sky that's just swinging it every single turn. And sure, the opponent can play down a flyer, but what's the chances that they're actually going to have enough health or enough damage or whatever to stop your Skyclave? And let's say they do have enough health or enough damage to stop your Skyclave. Who's to say you're not going to just Blood Chief's Thirst and destroy them? Who's to say you're not just going to use Alslid, give your Skyclave Shade protection, and go straight through their defenses, right? So this deck, the way it works is by having so much utility, so much evasion from your opponents being able to block, and so many answers from your opponents being able to play creatures, that it, it just wins. You know, it, it doesn't have an option. You just have creatures down constantly attacking. It just wins skyclave apparition i believe there was three or four copies of this card in the deck and i can see why it is a beautiful beautiful card so three mana for this two two that reads when it enters the battlefield exile up to one target non-land non-token permanent you don't control with converted mana cost four or less so interesting things here non-token obviously it's it's hard to hit some things with this like the shark typhoon tokens or whatever but it's also any non-land so you can hit Planeswalkers, you can hit Artifacts, you can hit Enchantments, you can hit Creatures, right? It's it's a very, very versatile card. And on top of that, you get a 2-2. You get a little body back, right? You get a little Ballerina body back. And, uh, you know, as per the usual, you can throw on your Demonic Embrace or whatever, turn it into a Flyer, and have it swing in. Next up, we have two copies of Murderous Rider, more removal, a 2-3 Lifelinker, which is really good actually if you are up against those Omnath decks because they deal that four damage so often, you're gonna need that life. It's really good against those aggro decks. Basically all of the above, it's, it's just really good. Lotus is one of the cards that I main boarded because I didn't have uh, the full copies of something. I can't remember what, what else I was missing. Maybe it was the Agadims or the Skyclave. Anyways, Lotus, three mana for this three two with lifelink. Uh, you can pull back almost all of these cards down here right all of your permanents from down there and it's it has lifelink so you can you can again send this thing into the sky gain the life you need deal the damage you need and be a-okay one of the most notable things though is being able to replay the selfless or the ass Al every single turn and give your creatures that protection give your creatures that indestructible agadim's awakening is it's beautiful right it's a land or if you don't need it to be a land it's a way to you know bring back everything that you can afford basically <laughs> legion angel is so much value one it's a flyer four mana for a four three flyer we've talked about this before that is that is perfectly fine stat lines and the fact that it immediately replaces itself as soon as it touches the battlefield is even better so as soon as this enters you can go into your sideboard and grab another one if you have four copies play two in your main board play two in your sideboard that's what i've seen most people do and that's what i've seen to work best i only have two copies so i'm playing one in main one inside right and then the last but not least we have Amiria's call which again is one of those flippy floppy lands if you have it play it it's great it's fantastic it's enjoyable and if you don't don't worry about it it's not like you get up to that seven mana every single game it's not like you get up to that seven mana every other game right this is one of those things that happens 10 maybe 15 percent of the time you know it doesn't happen all the time but it is awesome when it does so if you have it play it if not don't go breaking your back over it right anyways hope you all have enjoyed the deck tech breakdown if you had please be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe as well as hit that bell icon and don't forget if you're enjoying the content go share it out with a friend go join our discord go be part of this wonderful beautiful community that you all have helped me build into uh into a little masterpiece, if, if you'll allow me to say that, right? <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into our matches. Any Hoosers, War Child. War Child. War. War never changes.
I was trying to think if that actually mattered here, what, what land we play. I can't think of too many situations where it might, but maybe. Maybe, just maybe. I do want to get Luminarch down. Don't get me wrong. Love me some Luminarch. But Season Hollow Blade is more damage quicker, and we can always discard the Skyclave, and it lives, right? It lives. Kind of like Frankenstein. It's alive, and phew, lightning. I guess the lightning happens first, huh? Right, because that's, that's what kicks it alive. <laughs> if, if anybody's ever actually read the, the Frankenstein book, it's, it's a great book. Um, certainly not what you expect from all of the the media play or whatever. Bum, 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 ba, da, bum. <clears throat> okay, cool, cool, cool. Not gonna argue with that logic. Boom, bam, baby. Boom, freaking, bam. Now, do I go for the Legion Angel on this next turn, or do I go for the Luminarch? I guess it depends what we draw into. If we draw into some protection or things along those lines, that'll be a bit of an obvious one. But for the time being, build two lands. Hey, hee hee, I'm fine by that. I didn't want to see either one of those cards, actually. Well, Amiria's Call is all right, but I don't want to see it this early. Do not want to see it. All right, so we're gonna go for the Luminarch. This way, we can also replay the Skyclave. Skyclave, shade. We can't kick that. Why is that lit up? So thoroughly confused. So, so, so thoroughly confused. Huh. Any hoosers? Let's put this on you. <clears throat> Yay, damage. Gotta love a good old soaring thought thief every once in a while, am I right? <laughs> yes, mill me those lands. Beautiful. B E A U T full. I think we do this so they can't just simply like singularly block my shit does this give get oh so it does that's annoying ah but we're still not at that limit yet so it's the free swingaroo down to five down to five what do we do here what do we do I guess we could have played the Skyclave back, right? We could have played Fable plus Lordris plus Skyclave. It's all right. Demonic Embrace. Uh, going in, going in the skies against this deck isn't the world's best. I would almost rather just find our protection. But it's hard for me to say no to that card, right? Because we can discard it with Seasoned Hollow Blade and still play it back, so... It's it's really good value. Really, really good value. Speaking of good value, look at our opponent. They're down to five life. Five life, two cards in hand. What is it? What is it gonna be? Four mana to take out our flyer. That does turn everything for them online. Are they just gonna crack back? They can't afford. They can't afford. 
cannot afford We don't have anything else for the Lotus to play over there. Oh, we could kick it. Two counters, it enters as a 5-3. Ah. We'll just work on building up everything. They're definitely going to play another Thieves Guild Enforcer. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. All right, so sacrificing that land doesn't do anything for us here. Two cards left. What do y'all think it is? Does Warchild have the answer? Bum, bum, bum. Come on, show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's kind of, kind of money, kind of money-ish. We can swing all in because we have the selfless, so no matter who they choose to like try to kill, Skyclave is the only... Actually, none of them really matter, right? We're just going to protect the Luminarch. We can discard the Luminarch because we have Lotus to play it back. Deck's going pretty well versus a non-Omnath deck, right? We're like, we're we're having great value, great plays. Okay, so that's a GG. Good game, Warchild. Headhunter, 242. Hunting them heads. Okay, so realistically, I'd probably just go ahead and play that Fabled turn one. Grab Swamp, play Skyclave, turn two. I don't love it, I'm not going to lie, but we'll see. If we draw into a black mana on this next turn, I'm going to be a little furious. <laughs> That, that would be par for my luck, though. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. You think it's Boros Winota? I don't know. I guess we'll see. We shall see what it be. Oh yeah, it's Boros Winota. I'm like 33% sure. 
Or maybe Boros Warriors, right? But that's... Or, Bor or Boros Winota Dogs, whatever. It's all within the same category to me. What is the zero-cost spell that they keep hiccuping on, though? What is it? All right, well, we need to play you down so we don't we don't not curve out on our mana. And then uh, I guess we can just go for another Skyclave. But first things first, let's swing in with this one. I guess just, I should have swung in with this one, then played the land, right? Because what if they block with Selfless, and then I could have just saved myself a whole Skyclave fiasco. Uh, misplay on my part. It's okay. Who doesn't love having two Skyclaves to play? Plus, if we get a, a, a Swamp on this next turn, we can just play them both back down anyways. If we don't hit a land, we're probably just gonna probably put Demonic Embrace on our Skyclave because it allows us to do more damage. Another Temple of Silence. I don't think we need that. And since we hit what we hit this turn, I think we're... We're going to play our Skyclave back down. Either way, it costs us the rest of our play or our turn to do this. So if we don't sacrifice the Ocelot, we get to keep the Ocelot alive, right? So it's wise, it's wiser to not, wiser to not. So they are at four mana now, which is area four Winota. Thankfully they don't have anything already down prior, so Bosri's Lieutenant. Well, I can, I can exile that, All right? Four or less. With converted mana cost four or less, I'm, I'm fairly sure this will work. I hope so. Or I'm gonna look like a doofus. Hey, we got it. <clears throat> Tease mine. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Things are going really, really well for this deck, actually. We're like able to lock down the opponent's stuff while play creatures, while keep our creatures protected, trade out and have those creatures come back. It's it's a freaking beauty, man. It's a freaking beauty. We got protection with Ouslet in case they try anything cheeky. Stone cool. That's interesting, to say the least. <laughs> All right, so if I play this plus Season Hollow Blade, I still have one mana left over. I know, I know, I know, I need to get some some in the air stuff going on. But they have that reach. They have that reach. All right. So no attacks this turn. Um, but I can put the first strike, the flying first strike, on one of our cards. It will be all good. We're at five mana. One more mana, we can play Maul plus Demonic. <laughs> Noise. I know I said it, but at the same time, it is kind of our Skyclaves coming back. Although, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just going to play these on our Skyclaves. That's that's the root. That is the root. The rot. All right, because what do they do? Sacrifice the Stone Cold to the first striker or sacrifice the Stone Cold to the 6-2? To the we'll see. They got to make up... Uh, Got to make up their minds. Now, our Season Hollow Blade can't necessarily block and have Indestructible because we don't have any cards in hand. But next turn, that all changes. They are. They're dope. Yes. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They're still at 19 health. 
And they still do have a card advantage over us. Winota. What? What? That's a Winota. Told y'all it was Winota. FYI. We need more black mana. We only have two sources here. Although, I guess argument should have been made for Demonic Embrace. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm sorry, everybody. I was like, it was Gagglave. <laughs> silly, silly little goose. You silly, silly little goose. So we can't swing in with Season Hollow Blade. Bam. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Now, we can give our creatures protection from red if the time comes that we could deal that much damage, right? Okay, but that doesn't come in with haste. <laughs> so, you know, still in the clear. Still in the clear. All right, so this is a this is a difficult thing to weigh. Um, would I rather have Demonic Embrace or Luminar Asper? Demonic Embrace means that we could send this Skyclave up to an 8-4, which means we're dealing 13 damage this turn. Which means if I use Alslid, we are dealing lethal. So that worked itself out pretty easily, right? Right, Red. Beautiful. <laughs> so we're 2-1 with the with the Orzov aggro. Um Gabe or Gab or Gab. <laughs> Not sure. We'll keep this though. I'm not quite sure how this deck uh, really plays out. So we shall wait and see. I almost do want to go ahead and play the shelter so we can have mana for the mall, but I, I know better than that. I know that I shouldn't. So we'll just play the Skyclave and be a okay. All right, now we also have a Skyclave Apparition that is double white mana, and that's why you didn't see me play the the pathway there, right? You never allow that to live. You never allow that to see the opponent's turn, right? Get that Cobra shit out of here. All right, so now, yeah, the pathway can come down as white mana, and we'll have double black and double white, and we can cast everything in the deck virtually. Beanstalk, doing a little rampy rampy. Little ramp arena. I can respect that. Oh, this is a beautiful turn, beautiful play. Bring it down murderers plus the selfless, and you don't have to pay anything for the selfless. That's some cool beans. Those beans are cool. Cold off. Cold, cold off. <laughs> uh, cold. Cold, cold, cold. Cold beans. Ugh. Doesn't that sound disgusting? Actually, I'm sure there's some people out there that enjoy cold beans, right? I, I, there's people that enjoy everything. Is this going to be another goddamn Fable Passage? Because honestly, I'm getting tired of it. <laughs> I'm getting tired of y'all always having the, the Fable Passage. Oh, yes. Woo! No Fable Passage. We can all rest easy. We can all rest a little easier. All right, well, Archon definitely shuts down the Omnath decks. Right? right oh. Also, it's a flyer, so we can just go over Omnath. Remember, Jimmy, one spell a turn. Uh, okay, well, you love to see anything that's not a fable. I love to see anything that's not a fable. So we'll throw our maul down on... Skyclave or Murderers? I almost want to go for the Murderers, given they have the Omneth. Like, they can actually deal some real, real serious damage. You know?
The Skyclave can never block the Skyclave shade, so like we we need to put something on it so it is swinging in. So yeah, maybe we do just throw Maul onto the Skyclave. I think it'll be all right. It's not like we're in desperate need of the. What's going on? <laughs> Generally, this is the part where people love, yeah. All right, well, they don't have uh, they don't have the ability to play any more spells, right? Spiller really can't cast more than one spell each turn. Beautiful. So they have all that mana, but nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Nice. My turn. Don't mind if I do. Oh, don't tell me you have counter magic. Don't tell me you have counter magic. Bum bum bum. <laughs> Gab just likes leaving us on a cliffhanger. They're like, mm, we'll see. We'll see next time. All right, get in for the seven. Cheeky little seven. Bam. All right. And I don't want to play that shelter. I know we can play it down as a land and things might be a little bit smoother as far as us playing stuff. Um, I think... Ooh. Ah, we needed the shelter here. <laughs> Ooh. Ah. But the problem is, of course, if in playing the shelter, we wouldn't have had enough. So it's a little unfortunate, but they they got a, they got around it. You know, two mana, bouncy, bouncy. So they'll have one one big pop off here, right? Joy to the world, Omnath lives. You know, I think it almost would have been better for them to have played their other Fabled Passage, get the land out there, and then use the other Escape to Wilds. But maybe not. Maybe using Felidar and grabbing a, a little creature is the better thing. I could really use some untapped land here. Game, if you're listening. Listen closely. Okay, well, I mean, that, that's tap land, but sure, but sure. Uh, Blood Chiefs is pretty good. That actually gets rid of their Omnath. I need to play this back down for sure. Like, Archon needs to hit the board. Yeah. These what has to happen. All right. It's funny that like the the aggro decks, how it used to be like, all right, you gotta win by turn four, you might get board wiped. Now it's like, <laughs> you gotta win on turn four for sure, and you have creatures to deal with through turns one and through three, right? So, oh my bad, did your fabled enter tapped? Did it? That's a bummer. That's a whole bummer. It's funny because you you literally just looked at my Archon of Amiria card. Now that's a bit of a bitch. Genesis is, is for sure going to kick us in the nuts a little bit here. So who, who else is ready for that ban today? <laughs> Who else is ready for those bands, huh? Boy, I'm super happy this exists. In my life right now, I'm so thoroughly ecstatic that this Omnath deck exists. <laughs> oh. Who, whoever tacked on the deal four damage, they're the jackass, you know? The other people, okay, what were you thinking? But the the asshole that tacked on the four damage, you're you're a dick. 
Gain tons of mana, gain life, sure. Deal damage? That's a dick move, bruh. That's a dick move. Because now they don't even they don't even have to attack, you know, with Omnath. The the goal with Omnath decks literally isn't to even attack anymore. It's just to build the biggest side of the board as you can and stall. Stall like your life depends on it. Hey, Omnath's dead. So I can play this down. Uh, well, how high does this go? Just two. Just the two ski. Just the little two arena. Shade's got to keep swinging in. I guess I could put them all onto the Murderous Rider. If if we live through this turn, that's what we're doing. <laughs> this is like in those Final Fantasy games where you you try all day, you work your ass off, and you're like, I finally, I finally beat the boss. And then you realize that's one of those bosses that has two stages, you know? <laughs> and it just comes back even stronger than before and smacks you once. And you're like, okay. All right, you know what? Bloop. Let's go. Let's go play a different game. <laughs> Omnath is the big bad boss that has two stages. Three stages if you get really, really unlucky. <laughs> Just generally by the time you see that second Omnath, it is like a whole different level. All right, GG.